Yes, thank you. First of all, I would like to thank you, uh, uh, the organizers, uh, not only for having me here, but uh, also for uh, realizing this uh, uh, fantastic panel on a very important topic. In my pre presentation, uh, I will talk about uh, the interpretation potential of the depictions of the garments of female figures from the 5th century BC in Greece. I'm particularly interested in the following questions. Um, what are the meanings of the garments uh, on ancient depictions? Is there a thematic correlation between clothing and uh, the wearer? What significance do these elements have uh, for our interpretations? So far, these fundamental questions have only scarcely uh, been touched upon with regard to the classical Greek period. Interpretive approaches often purely rely on social identification models. But can the choice of garments depicted by, uh, be interpreted solely with monocausal explanatory models? Um, while for most of the uh, other ancient periods, like we hear today and will hear today, um, there are survey works and individual investigations available about economic, ritual, religion, production, consumption, exchange, technology, and so on and so on. Research on classical ancient garments has not long been concerned with social, cultural, and contextual con uh, questions relating to the archaeology material. These areas continue to be a major desideratum uh, for the Greek classic period. In a doctoral thesis, um, uh, Parthenos Nymphegyne, Weibliche Tracht Ikonographie als Bedeutungsträger im 5. Jahrhundert vor Christus in Griechenland, uh, Ulrike Tyson uh, deals precisely with this topic. Uh, she, she takes the approach uh, that the clothing was consci uh, consciously chosen in classical representations depending on the wearer. According to Tyson's, uh, the different garments uh, the different garments um, served uh, to visibly uh, convey the social character or divine qualities of the wearer. The open peplos, I um, give you here some um, information. Uh, the open peplos is assigned uh, to the patenoi, the closed peplos to the group of mothers uh, and or wives, the attic peplos, uh, you can see on, on the top. Um, especially to Athena, but sometimes also to Artemis and rare to the uh, Patenoi. The shaitan with fake sleeves, um, the most common type of garment, uh, with a long coat reaching from head to feet, is again for the bridges and uh, uh, brides and Aphrodite, as well as for nymphs and Attic citizens. The material basis for her thesis um, are the images of the 5th century BC, which were included uh, in her analysis across genres. However, she has not fully presented these genera. The aim of my master thesis, long ago, uh, was to test the semantic system of garments uh, she had designed on the uh, basis of sculptures, and uh, thus to assess a genre completely with regard to the question of the, uh, for the first time. Today, I will, limit it, uh, I will limit my presentation of the results of my work uh, to three groups, uh, the Nike, Leather with Swan, and uh, the Korai. Uh, Nike is clearly uh, a clearly defined and well-known character from ancient sources, so that it is uh, to be expected that the thesis of firmly uh, to assignable garment can be proven well with the help of the Nike representations. Let's have a closer look. The Nike of Paris. The figure stands on her uh, left foot, um, his heel slightly raised. The right foot must have uh, freely hung down from the base due to the leg position, which creates the impression of flying. The figure carries on the right side open, uh, and on the right side open, unbelted peplos with an apoptigma. The garment's folds on the front view are characterized by the few flat folds. The body shapes are veiled in the rear view by the dress. In front, the close of the peplos lies close to the legs, uh, whereby the contour, uh, contours emerge. The Nike of Paeonius. The figure is placed in a frontal orientation towards the viewer. The left leg is vertically below the figure with the foot pointing downwards. The right leg is slightly bent back, whereas the figure as whole is slightly bent forward. The wings are reconstructed far upwards and outwards. She floats above uh, the eagle of Zeus. 
Um, behind the figure, uh, there's a wide open hemation. Uh, in addition, uh, she wears a robe with an overlap that lies particularly close to her body at the front and blows back to the side of the figure widely. It is held only on the right shoulder by a fibula, uh, while it has slipped down from the left and uh, the bosom is no longer uh, covered by clothes. The rope is girded just above the belly button. Uh, the apoptygma swings out to the sides. The type of garment uh, is controversially discussed in research. The interpretations range from a shaitan to a peplos, open on both sides or on one side, to different comparisons with modern wrap dresses. This uncertainty um, is based on a particular characteristic. While the right side is open, oh, sorry. So, uh, while the right side is open, like uh, uh, the hold up and uh, the fabric in front of the legs clearly shows, also the left leg here is represented naked. Bernhard Schmalz rightly points out that the motive of the bare leg does not necessarily have to do uh, to be due to the real costume one, but can be understood as an expression of fast movement. It is therefore an overgirded peplos open on the right side, so it is an attic peplos with which we have to deal here. Um, another Nike, the Nike, um, yes, Nike from the sanctuary of Aris, we don't know it uh, for sure, but okay. Uh, the ring figure moves uh, to the right. She wears an attic peplos open on her right side. The longer overfold reaching down to the high uh, thighs is belted under the chest and at the level of the waist. The dress has slipped down from the left shoulder, but the breast is not exposed. In addition to the double girded open peplos, she wears a hemation. Can see it here. Um, she wears a mation, uh, which is only preserved on the back of the figure. The body shapes, especially the legs and breasts of the heavily moved figure, are clearly emphasized by the garment. Okay, sum up to the Nike. While Tyson described the attic peplos of the garment preferred uh, by Nike, uh, the examples have shown that the open peplos is an alternative uh, garment which she, uh, she describes as characteristic for Patenoi. Also, Nike is unmarried and childless. This is not one of her primary characteristics. All Nike shown, uh, shown here wear an open peplos which differs only by the belting. In these uh, representations, the most important characteristic of the figure is emphasized by the waving, tight-fitting garment, her speed. This can be taken as a sign against a monocultural explanation of costume. Let's go further. The woman um, leader with a swan. Um, the woman surrounds the swan with her right arm in front of her belly. The left arm is guided uh, sideways, uh, sideways upwards uh, away from the body. She wears an unbelted peplos open on the right side. Its fibula is closed only on the left shoulder. Uh, from the right, the rope has uh, gilded down over the chest. The right side of the body is naked. Also, the closed body shapes are clearly emphasized by the garment. The identification of the figures later um, is secured due uh, to the intimate representation with the swan. Leda is known as the wife of Tyndareus and mother of Castor and Polydoikos from the Odyssey. Euripides, on the other hand, has handed down as a child when Phoebe, Clytemestra, and Helena. Almost 500 years later, Apollodorus reports that Zeus visited her in uh, the shape of a swan, a swan and had uh, fathered Polydoikos and Helena with her. The same night, she also slept with her husband, Tyndareus. From this connection, then Castor was born. It can be noted from the sometimes very differing literary sources that Leda is a mother and wife. In the sculpture discussed here, Zeus, in the uh, shape of a swan, approached her as he fled from an eagle so that she protected him, as can be seen from her right and raised left arm. That Zeus will seduce her um, is also made clear by the open peplos, whose fibula um, has already come off her right shoulder. It is clearly an erotic scene. The rope uh, contradicts Tyson's interpretation. For a wife and mother, um, a closed peplos or a chiton with fake sleeves would be expected which would also correspond uh, to the erotic character of the scene. 
The open peplos here, however, um, would identify the rara as partenoi. That is clearly not the case. Um, the choice of the rope uh, was not based on the social status um, of the person, but um, uh, because it is very suitable for the representation of the moment before Leda and Zeus will have sex. It exposes the body of Leda and underlines the erotic aspect um, clearly. The illustration shows that the situation depicted had a decisive influence on the choice of garment. Let's come to the Korai. Um, age and social status um, are two central categories in Tyson's work, yet she mixes uh, them, namely that of the girls, the Korai, and that of the Patena. Uh, thus, uh, she describes the running maiden from Eloisus uh, first as a girl in order to point her uh, status as a Patenos a few pages later. According to Tyson, girls are 10 to 14 years old and have not reached the status of a Patenos. Such a separation is problematic, however, as the ancient uh, written sources show, um, there are people uh, that people are referred uh, to as girls or marriage-able young women, uh, or maiden, uh, by the terms Kore and Patenos. Um, for example, um, in Theocritos uh, uh, Oaristis um, from the first half of the third century BC uh, shows the synonymous uh, use of the two words terms in two consecutive sentences. Um, so um, here, Parthenos came as a girl and now goes as a woman, uh, Parthenos, a uh, gyne, and a uh, wife now and mother and nurse of the children, but never a girl. Um, she's a gyne, mitera, um, but no kore anymore. Um, Parthenos and kore are here um, opposed to the terminus gyne in the following lines. It becomes clear that the transition from a girl to a woman, so from Paternos and Kore to Gyne, is carried out through sexual intercourse, oi ne. That antiquity is much more complex uh, than the division into Paternos, Nymphe, Gyne suggests, is uh, shown not only by the uh, inclusion of the Kore as a terminus in the social sense, but also by the round sculptural, um, by the round sculptures. Like here, um, for girls, the goddess Kore Persephone and uh, the Kore from the Erechtheion, um, this group is represented in completely four different garments. So the Chiton with fake sleeves, Chiton without fake sleeves, closed peplos, and Eric peplos. Here too, it is evident that the costume is not unambiguous. In summary, we can state that clothing has several levels of meaning in ancient iconography. It is not clearly determined um, by the social status of the wearer. Various factors influence not only the type, but also design and arrangement of the garment. And garments are not only markers for a social role model, they are also an essential part of the narrated story and thus a multifaceted pictorial element. Um, it is shown that a more in-depth examination of clothing has a high information potential. In order to achieve reliable results, uh, future research must include both the complete spectrum of clothing and especially its possible combinations that um, wasn't um, a topic here. Not rely on monocausal and unambitious um, interpretative, interpretative um, approaches and expand the material basis, including the vase images because of their numbers, the person names on it, and uh, the dating basis, and uh, the attic tombstones um, to extend the range from the myth depictions that it was here clearly um, emphasized to that of the citizen images. Such an approach uh, would contribute to a better understanding of the multi-layered usability of clothing to convey differentiated and nuanced um, image meaning and thus to a better understanding of the image as whole. Well. Thank you.